Okay, so Sukiana and Sexy Red, these are real rappers, apparently. No, they're not real rappers. <laughs> they came, they came out with a new video. Uh, it's called Hood Rats. Check this out. First of all, I want to say there is a, there's a lot of sexy ass girls in the hood, but I just want to say sexy red reminds me of, I try not to do this, but she reminds me of the dustiest of the dustiest birds. Hmm. Right. <laughs> I feel free now that I was able to say that. And this video is, is so bad for music, hip hop and black women on so many different levels at the same time. I just think it's a little bit disturbing. And Big somebody going to say, you know, my audience is not really in their 20s and their 30s. But some 20 and 30 year olds might say, and even some people in their 40s might just say, you are a hater. See, they, we, we take in this idea of female empowerment, right? Let's talk about even before Madonna, but let's kind of start at Madonna and share. All right, Madonna introduced this, uh, this this female empowerment through sexiness and sex, right? And it was controversial even back then. There was some questions. This is just a, a hoe that's singing or what is she doing? I think in retrospect, we can look at a lot of things that Madonna did as definitely being something that kind of broke the mold on the culture of music in terms of women owning their own sexuality. If you want to bring it into hip hop, you could talk about Lil' Kim, who was somewhat at that time an outlier. You would see Trina come soon after, which to me was she was a little bit more brazen with her hoochie behavior. But Trina could rap. She had a personality. It was something there going on. Okay. Lil' Kim has something going on right there. Lil' Kim could spit. The sexiness was a it was seasoning on it. No matter what your parents might have thought about the album cover of her squatting, we, of those that are involved in hip hop, heard the music and we understand the value in the music. In other words, let's take Lil' Kim and put her in some sweatpants and a motherfucker hoodie. Still good music. Still good music. She added some other shit to it. We respect the Queen B. This right here, these women, if they're signed, I don't know where they signed that, didn't get signed because somebody heard some bars and were like, you know what? These girls are talented. And their voices need to be heard. And these are the next Queen Latifah. This is the next Yo Yo. This is the next MC Light. Not even the next Cardi B. Right. One of the lyrics is <laughs> I lost my virginity and turned into a hoe. I'm a, I appreciate y'all indulgence because I'm gonna go through this whole thing. I got to say this and then I'm gonna open up the floor. Um, I suck dick like a champion when he put that perk on my ass. I'm gonna just say pause. Uh, I suck nut. I really feel like an elephant. Elephant. Tell Joe Biden I want to suck on the president. Do you think Joe knows about this? Listen, that's a rhetorical question. So here, cooning in front of white people. Cooning, okay? I'm a, I gotta say what it is. Cooning in front of white people, really leaning into negative stereotypes. Being loud as hell, not knowing how to act in certain places where you don't act like that. Watch how they set this video up, right? They spent a lot of money on the video, right? They spent a lot of money on the video. And then they put these, they do the fish out of water, and they put them in the country club setting, which we've seen this many a time, where they put the person from the hood in the country club setting. And it happened on Martin, right? Martin did it to himself. We took Gina to a fancy restaurant. He wilded out inside the restaurant. Right. So we know that fucking joke, but it's like you purposely put these girls inside that 
so it's almost like you're trying to force this juxtaposition on society. When black people see it, that's stupid. They might think, oh my God, they, oh, they went in there and they turned up. Cause that's what some of your dumbass friends fucking think. That's how they think. But when white people see it, they making fun. It's more, it's, it's further reinforcement for the idea that in certain places that black people don't belong because they don't know how to act. And these two women, one of them at least got kids, was more than willing to play along with that stereotype to sell out black people. I say this all the time. When you look at the 50s and you look at the 60s, you see black people fighting for rights. You see black people marching. You see black people in, in suits. And I think the suits and the nice dresses was a way to tell the larger society that despite your proclamation that we is uh, savage animals. We every bit as classy, if not more classy than those people that hate us. And we was going to show that. And so I try to, I try to draw a line from that civil rights movement to where we are right now and thinking to myself, when did it become that in order for a black girl to get on, she had to show you everything. And so somebody going to say I'm hating, but the lyrics are, I suck dick like a champion when he put perk on my ass, lost my virginity and turned into a hoe. She said, my booty hole brown, my pussy pink. Let's go to another point that people seem to be missing. This music is clearly is is pornographic, whatever. We're not going to just talk about the pornographic nature of it, okay? A lot of nasty lyrics out there. But this is meant to be marketed towards teenage girls. This That, that song cannot be for a 40-year-old woman. <laughs> if you got a kid that's over the age of 12 and you went to one of these concerts, you got some real problems in your life. I can almost guarantee you your life is broken. Certain of your bills is not being paid. If you over 40 years old and your kids is over the age of 12, 30, this is being marketed for young black women. And then when you go to the concert, what I think is going to happen if these chicks last is you're going to end up at a concert with a bunch of ratchet ass black chicks and a bunch of wannabe white chicks. See, the thing about the white chicks is they're going to have fun with it for a couple years and they're going to move on in life and they're going to become somebody's wife and they gonna be working in HR somewhere doing their thing. The young black girl is about to get caught up in this. The young black girl is about to be thinking that if a chick at school say something a little bit off about them, they got to go confront her and beat the dog shit out of her. And fuck your man and be a hoe and wear the nastiest shit you could possibly wear. If you a parent right now of a teenage girl, is this what you letting your child listen to? Um, I'm going to run through this. We got Sukiana on all fours at the red carpet acting a fool at the VMAs. Mm. On all fours, black woman, all fours acting a fool. She was in London in front of Buckingham Palace while and out. I'm trying to get my coochie stretched. I'm trying to get my coochie stretched and eat a nigga ass. Eat a nigga ass. We be eating niggas ass today in London. Period. Baby. I'm trying to get this coochie stretched. Why is everything about these women the nastiest shit ever? Everything we see about them is about the nastiest shit that they ever do. It's never really about the fucking music. Ever. Sexy Red is known for bragging about, or at least talking about the fact very publicly, openly, that she had chlamydia twice. I kind of didn't need to know that. About what? She had chlamydia twice. Sexy Red says she had chlamydia twice, and that used to be the kind of thing that you never wanted nobody to find out about. They might be in the school, and it was somebody that you, it was one person, right, at your school that had chlamydia one time, right? And when that, that was a secret that they was holding on to. When that shit got out, that was breaking news. 
and you never yeah. lived that fucking down. I don't care how much, how many times you washed your ass. You was the person that had chlamydia. Now you going on social media. Somebody is behind the scenes saying, "Let's push this forward." She got a. She got one. One. A, one of her breakout songs is called Pound Town. And she got another one called No Panties. So Didn't the question is, do that? Somebody already did. am I being too hard on these girls when we have groups like Two Live Crew back in the day? Am I being too hard? Or is this, especially this song, dangerous to the culture of black music, hip hop, and black people, anybody. Easy E, give me that nut. Just gonna say that real quick. Listen, <laughs> we open the doors for this, this shit. shit. But this this kind of shit is the entire first reason why hip hop needs sub sub genres. Put that shit over there. You think I'm saying? Call it ratchet hop, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Booty hole hop. I don't know, but I, but I don't think it helps us to categorize it. No, nah, okay. nah, it needs to be categorized away from hip hop because that shit is cringe. It is, but is it going? If you you put it over here, it's still coming out. It's still it's there, still, yeah. It's still influencing the same people. So the question is, what what is the Separate. message that we need, what is the message that we need to send to the majority of black women? Not this shit. Are, are, right. And should we shame them? Like, that's a very difficult thing now. Listen, how about this? They should be ashamed of themselves. They, they should, should be. be. Right. All but right, we- so let, can I can I just cut in real quick? Because I'm gonna say I, I won't even I won't even break down what I thought of the video because when I first saw the video until you told me like Suki is the one that was saying all that that stuff online and all that, to me it sounded like like a I guess like a ratchet weird al no limit spoof. You know what I'm saying? It to me, it's like dick in a box <laughs> type of situation. You know, they built Nikki to look how she looks now. If y'all heard Nicki Minaj freestyling that stairwell and you look at her, you know what I'm saying? That's not that's not her. So throughout the years, although women have always been objectified to a point, and I think that's where Madonna and little Kim come in as grasping like the Fuck the double standard. You know what I'm saying? And like Trina, they Trina and Lil' Kim were more on some like pimp shit. You know what I'm saying? Not completely objectifying themselves, twerking and and tapping on each other's pussies and videos and all that kind of stuff. They were more so embracing their sexuality. And as the years have have come, it's almost like our way of saying, fuck you, yeah, we're women and we fuck too. But it has come to a point where it's almost fucking normal for women to be doing that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? For for little little girls to be seeing twerk videos and stuff like that and thinking it's okay because these are the women that all the men are flocking to in the videos. These are the women that the famous men are marrying. It's all smoke and mirrors. So in a case like this, it's almost like let me clown myself before y'all clown me. Yeah, I'm a hoe. Yeah, this, that. I'm not saying by any means it's something I want to listen to and it's not something I think is okay. But is society even going to allow for somebody who is more so somebody no, who no, can no, be no, a no, role no, model no, no, and no. come back into hip hop? We lost the shit. Right, but I think it's more so on the people that's behind the scenes. And, you know, I, I think that there's certain people who did very explicit stuff. I mean, Two Live Crew really was a novelty, right? And it was meant for a particular sect. I don't know how serious people really took that. Um, but uh, when you look, let's say you look at Trina, it's a lot of nasty raps there, but there's talent there. This is right. the thing. Right. This is the if just think of. Put it on put it on the on the guy side now, right? And let's just say the worst gangster rap shit you could ever fucking think of. Cause I'm not gonna pre I'm not I was thinking in my mind, yo, I should just freestyle something really fucking horrible so we can compare. I'm not gonna even disrespect hip hop like that. But when you look at these girls, you're not looking at 
girls talk about nasty shit, but they talented. Listen to their delivery. <laughs> Listen to the fucking bars. Like literally sound like some chicks that just rolled out of bed and started fucking singing some shit. Like she said, she said, coochie in his dreads. That's why he smells like cat. How'd the coochie juice get in your dreads? How'd they get there? I mean, that song, that's why I'm saying that should seem like a spoof. That shouldn't even be considered hip hop. That's not by any means. For me, when I just heard that and you showed it to me, I said, give Suki a Netflix series because she would be hilarious. I thought she's adding like a com like a comedic thing, but then you told me the VMA awards, and I didn't realize that was her in the video. And now I see, I'm like, okay, you just be. I don't nasty. think you reward that. I mean, I listen. Here's no, the thing. I agree. The I whole agree. idea, the whole I idea, agree. the whole idea that my persona as a woman is the I'm the most ratchetest person that you could ever meet is weird to try to flip that into an entertainment career. Right. I think you see people like Charleston White doing that on the guy side in terms of I'm just going to be the most outlandish, say the wildest fucking shit, threaten all type of motherfuckers, get myself in all these situations. Like that's an example of my persona is I'm the ratchetest, don't give a fuck nigga out there. Right. And these girls is doing this with the music. What I'm saying is when I see something like that, I'm really disheartened about my people that they would allow themselves to be used in this way for money. All money ain't good money. And I done probably fucked up some money in my life because of certain things that I wouldn't do. Keep it to the buck. And sometimes you think back on that, like maybe I should have just played the game. But then would it cost you? I was thinking about some shit this morning. Would it cost you in order to be able to pay your fucking bills? I don't know if it's worth the fucking cost. I need to be able to look at myself. And so... These girls obviously don't have no shame. I mean, then the girl Sexy Red end up having a, a, a sex video leak. Right? Leaks. Was it right? Because she's on IG Live getting her shit blown out. How does that even happen that that supposedly gets out by mistake? You know what I mean? Like, it's just a, the whole run up to what they are about. Is somebody behind the scenes spending money? Listen, somebody is sending the Uber to pick him up. It's Biden. <laughs> it's Biden. Some somebody's paying for the flights. Somebody's paying for the food. Somebody's paying for the hair and the makeup. Somebody's paying for the video to get shot. These young ladies been put in this position deliberately. Whoever pulling the strings, they understand that right now children are not only going through a gang of shit that we as adults may not have ever been through, but they're also young. They're very, very impressionable. You go places every day and see something that disgusts you along these lines or something that has you like, where are her parents? Where, where are these kids, you know, where are their role models at? Once we as people of color lose the women, we fucked. We are truly fucked. The man alone has been demonized in more ways than one. Once this new breed of woman takes over as the standard woman, we are fucked. We don't have to worry about procreation and any of that shit because everybody will be gay. Everybody will be stressed out. Everybody will be either a gangster or a whore. And we won't be appealing to each other in any way, shape, or form. This type of shit takes a lot off of the table for us as people of color. A lot off of the table. This is the tattoo on the face going to the job interview. You don't bounce back from this. There is no cleaning it up. Wasn't we just talking about Black China um, needing to, to get money from Tiger? Did better when she was hoeing. She know that. <laughs> did better when she was hoeing. You see how that shit worked? So when the young ladies understand this, that's the route that they take. And the sad part is, as men, there are going to be some of us that are going to gravitate towards that shit, further feeding the fire. We're going we gonna to come to the shit. We're going to bring wood, fresh, strong wood to the fire. Pun intended to keep that shit going. I'm thinking of a time 
I'm thinking of a time where it was accountability and we're not in that time anymore. So what I'm about to say is more of a fantasy than anything else, but it's an answer. I think one of the things that could be an answer to the problem, um, this chastity belts <laughs> this ah, with the lock on it. <laughs> Listen, this records, uh, Love the Genius, Rhapsody, Shay Noor, um, Jean Grey, Bonnie Stone, I'm gonna put her name in the mix. Um, let's say one or three of these women came out and just completely made us gave an ass diss on these type girls or, or on these particular girls. Harsh. I'm gonna tell you what happens. I'm gonna tell you what happens. Us as fans of hip hop, we're gonna enjoy it. But to the naked eye, all these bitches haters because these motherfuckers getting their money up and they doing this and they doing that. The motherfuckers that's naked got more money than the motherfuckers that got clothes on. Well, this is why, and that's just the obvious. That's yeah, just the yeah. obvious. Of course, but we this get is why we get behind it as a movement. I just think when you start the conversation, this is what, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it something like this. People mm-hmm. ain't gonna like when I say this. Holy war. What's that? Holy war. Mm. <sighs> this thing gotta get stomped out. No, you gotta spell it H O E L Y. Somebody had maybe somebody has to sit down and love them, but I don't think a diss in this case would solve a damn thing. I just don't think it would. You know what the biggest problem is that shit gonna go unheard. <laughs> It's no more grandmas. No. If, if them the bitches had, if, if bitches had grannies, they wouldn't be doing that shit. Because here's, let's, let's, let's think about this. We all know this for a fact. For the last, I don't know, let's say 300 years, the black woman is the most disrespected human on the planet Earth. These play right into that shit. They are confirming every single stereotype about black women. This shit is not is more than dangerous, Mike. You feel me? Because music is the biggest teacher ever. You know what I'm saying? These kids are listening to this bullshit, my booty hole brown and my pussy's pink. Can I say what the what the number one mistake that we're making ourselves right now is that we're dedicating our time to play in their video and giving it the attention when we should be highlighting something like Shay Noor, basically no disrespect, but um, smoking black thought on a track. We should be playing and praising and giving these women like Shay and Love more attention than having conversations because this is what they're reaching for, attention, right? So we need to start shining the light on the women who are representing the culture. And Shout not out. just women, because Shout these women can wrap Nesman most Nefertiti. of y'all men under the fucking table. So listen, I think that and and French mentioned Nesman Nefertiti. I got to shout her out because she on the rise, oh, beating yeah. the shit out of men and women on the microphone. Absolute animal. Um, and her and French got an album together, and that ain't just a plug because that's my man. I just me and French went back and forth about Nesman Nefertiti when I didn't understand it all the way. And he stayed on me about it, but it's very, it's something there, right? And something very dangerous over there, what she's doing in a good way. But the way, the reason why I disagree with your take on that, Beans, is because that's a 30,000 foot utopian view. Yeah, we should, people will always say that. Why don't you shine more light on the positive and not give shine to the negative? Because if something is festering over here, you, you make a mistake by completely ignoring it as well. And I think that when we talk about it in this type of format, we create a counterbalance because it might be people out there that might be looking for that counterbalance. And we need more people to step up and start saying more things about this. It could go either way. And people say that the country or a culture is at an inflection point. And the truth of the matter is America in and of itself has always been at an inflection point. And hip hop in and of itself has always been in a, in, at an inflection point. And black culture has always been in the 
been in a struggle with one another. At one point, the struggle was Malcolm and Martin philosophy. You know, are we going to be completely nonviolent? Or are we going to be what some people might call radical? You know what I mean? Radical self-defense, Black Panther style type thing. So we have these battles that go back and forth. And then in the 80s, late 70s and 80s, you had the struggle in, 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 in Black households about suburban versus urban. So if you lived in the Midwest or something like that, it's like, oh, you didn't came up as a Black person because now you didn't got to move out there with the white folks. That was a struggle. Another late 70s, 80s struggle was like, okay, there was a dutiful Black woman, Black wife, but now she going out into the world and she getting her own, right? It used to be a time when a bold black woman, I'm old enough to remember that a bold black woman used to look like a woman coming out the house with a briefcase and a suit on and the perm did up, you know what I mean? Dropping off kids at the school and then going to grab coffee and getting to work. That was seen as like, wow, that's, that's kind of radical, right? Mm -hmm. Now we got to the point where the radical black woman is the woman who without any talent to back it up and saying my booty hole brown. If you would have connected that line to something else. Okay. What? Black, black women. If you're over 20, if you're over 30, well, however old you are, black women, like what is your favorite part about that song? What is the redeeming value in that thing? What is the thing from there? 30 years from now, you can be like, Oh, that was my joint. What are we doing here? There's never going to be a time where 30 years from now, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, strong, um, damn, yeah, I'm, I'm classifying them. I'm putting them same ones that's, <laughs> that's doing that shit in, in that particular box. But nobody's going to, to say that shit. Yo, by the time these young ladies from now turn into those ladies and, and say that type of shit like we already gone. Listen, <laughs> when is the last time you ran into respectable elders that were not yours? For the last X amount of years, I've run into uh, plenty of elders. I'm a very visible person. I move around. But I've noticed the change in the older people that I run into. As people of color, I don't know if it's the hair, because I speak to everybody, you know, just out of general courtesy, but our elders are not what they used to be. As I know what you, I, Mav, I know what you're getting at. Let me say this. Let me, let me put it in a nutshell. Like Let's do it. some of our black elders, 60 is the new 30. Yeah, they suck. I got old men looking at me like, Bro, you, is you serious? I said hello to you. You screw face me. And now you looking at me crazy. But if I do you nasty, I'm the fucking bad guy. You mean Otis? Because you old niggas ain't just regular old niggas. You think you, me in my 20s. I'm not even that same guy. They <laughs> suck, bro. The old lady suck. Yo, your grandmother trash, B. We don't have the same grandmothers that were like my grandmother. Listen, my mother was not like her mother. So this this me making it honest, honest. This me really pulling the veil off of it. My mother was not the grandmother that my grandmother was. I'm telling you this shit fresh off of losing my mother. My mother was not the grandmother that her mother was to me, to us. This that shift. My mom was a part of this shift. She was a part of that change. Listen, we and and niggas my age, Mike, we are the last generation to have those kind of grannies. You dig the ones that sat in the crib all day and gave you wise words and sat there and knit and you know what I'm saying with the old school wisdom. You know what I'm saying? That's just gone. Once that once that generation of grandmothers passed away, that's it. Let me just break down Big Mama real quick. Um, and so many people don't even have a Big Mama, right? But it was Big Mama. It was Big Mama. And listen, 
I better call her Big Mama. Or I was going to get slapped down the block, right? So Saturday, <laughs> my mama take me over to Big Mama house every Saturday, right? I'm just going to tell you. Let me break this down just real quick, real quick, right? Go on Big Mama house Saturday morning, probably get there fucking 10 o'clock in the kitchen. You walk right in, right? I'm just saying it's scrambled eggs, it's sunny side up eggs, it's homemade biscuits, it's... Did I say boiled eggs? It's, it's toast, it's grits, it's pancakes, it's links, it's patties, it's bacon, it's cereal, it's it's a whole bread box. Real grandma's got a bread box in the crib, right? Back. Open up the bread, bread box, there's bread in there, and it's all different type of motherfucking donuts in there. This is Big Mama. <laughs> this ain't, this, this, another thing about Big Mama, growing greens in the motherfucking backyard, right? You get in the fucking oh. whooping. Listen, listen, yeah, listen. You're going and you you're getting the whooping. You're going to get your own switch. That's what's about to happen. Facts. Yes, facts. Yes. What's about to happen. Listen. Back, you back to the logical own switch. Fair. You went and got the whole tree. Oh yeah, if you get the wrong switch, man, you could bring the tree back. I Look, get it. I pick can it. Can I can out. I come right. to the cookout real quick because my family was like that too. So. Just That's to let up. you know. And I just want to say, and and Beans, you don't don't feel the need to be involved in this or this didn't necessarily happen to you. But I just want to show, show 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 of hands, everybody that got hit with a switch. <laughs> hey yo, and you ain't called no motherfucking body. A switch is a stick, bro. You ain't called That's, no motherfucking body. No, and you ain't even think about that shit. It's an unbreakable, like solid whip. And, it <laughs> and let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You got kids in school, talk about they got ADD and all this other kind of shit. You got a motherfucker fucking up in second period, and he gonna fuck up again in eighth fucking period. When you a got hit with that switch, you were, that listen, when you when you was when you got hit with the switch, you was good for that day. The whole yeah, day. You were, man, you was straight. Yes, ma'am. No, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hey, yo, question, question. Now this one, this this is a serious fucking question, too. Did your grandfather or a man ever hit you with a switch? No. I'm gonna and I was about to say no. Only only Big Mama. Big Mama. That's the only person in the fucking world. She gotta be a big mama that can hit you with a switch. No man can use a switch on Listen, you. No man big can daddy not even switch. talking. No, he don't say shit. He, he drinking water. He, I was gonna say he drinking in his chair. That's it. Yep, he drinking water in his in oh, his, doing, his dicky doing, suit, doing sitting down minding his business. Mm -hmm. Yep, I what, told flipping through the that. channels or or reading the newspaper. One of the two. Exactly. Hey, hey, when it's all over and you doing all that sniffling, he gonna look over and say, mm -hmm. "You all right, boy? You all right, boy?" All right, boy. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. And that's it. Walk it off. Walk it off. Nobody, it off. nobody was coming to fucking save you. Right? No. And so me, I got hit with the switch in my well, life. Getting the switch too. Three times. Right? So, because over Big Mama House, that's where you would do the switch at. Over over my house, mom and dad, it was just the belt. Right? So I only saw the switch when I was over at Big Mama House. So how many times do you need to get hit with the switch to understand that certain things you don't do over Big Mama House? Me, three. <laughs> I think me uh, mine was probably like one or two. Three. But you caught on fast. Switch? Switch. Caught on in, fast. Other words, in other words, in other words, my, my big mama made sure this young man right here, I could let him out in the front yard and the backyard, and I, we ain't got nothing to worry about. Because he know what it is when he come home, fucking up. Right? That's right. just what it was. And so y'all French crystallized it correctly. You you're missing the big mamas out here right now. And Mav, yeah, you yeah. put it you you put it in perspective when you say these old folks different. And listen, I'm a grandfather, right? And I'm different. Yo, listen, that's just, it's not sad, but like, you're not, you're not that different. You ain't out here ice grilling people. You ain't doing goofy shit. I still shit. got some you big ain't... daddy in me. I still got big daddy yeah. in me. I know how to and, sit and there. I know how to, I know how to give lessons. I know how to be boring. I know how to do that yeah. type of motherfucking shit. And I know how to convey right. class to my son and my grandson. You know what I mean? I'm not going to me, me and first of all, me and my son and my grandson, we're not going to be in Chuck E. Cheese brawling up. If somebody mess with my son, I'm going to move him out the way. This is for me. That's just how I am. Right. But I'm not about to encourage my, I watched, um, I forget these, these dudes. I forget who I'm talking about right now. I went to trial and the one dude, he was a rapper and his father snitched on him. Right. His father I, snitched not on him. Ago, I've seen that. Right. He did it. I did something like that on my show. 
He did a drive by, some shit like that, killed some people. His daddy told on him. But see, like, his daddy was in the gang too. Them niggas was out there banging together. Yeah. Right? So but when we look at it on this side with the men, we look at it on this side with the woman. I just think for women, it's dangerous. Because I got IG. Mm -hmm. And every girl is now showing their booty to the camera. Yeah. Even the old, even the vets out here. Listen, they all got that broke leg in one picture. Then one picture, they turned around looking back over the shoulder. But everybody's showing their ass. Everybody's showing their ass. Can I just can I point something out too? So up in the video where they all slapping on each other's coochies, you know, like such a memorable moment for me was back when like the VMAs were fun to watch and when Diana Ross leaned over and jiggled Lil Kim's titty. Right. Tell me. <laughs> and the classiest of women doing that, you know what I mean? It was like that was a, a monumental moment, moment because it's it was a like it's a moment. She she gave it a little jiggle, like because that wasn't the norm. You don't just reach over and jiggle another right. woman's titty. I mean, Diana Ross couldn't get a deal today. No, neither could Shaka Khan. Nope. <laughs> like couldn't Tina Turner. Like Anita Baker would not get signed. No. You know what I mean? Not in the climate that, that we're in right now. She let us see them titties. Now we might be able to negotiate some. And that takes me all the way to, and I didn't mean to go here, Janelle Monet. Oh, who, damn, who all Janelle. Of a, who all of a sudden has decided, I need to show everybody everything I got. Oh, yeah. when did she do that? Oh, shit. Listen, and I, I ain't mad about it, see, but I'm, I'm mad about it. I'm out the loop. I'm sorry. The whole rollout for the album was just nasty stuff from her, like showing tits and all type of stuff. And like, she's a beautiful woman, but it's like, you didn't already, your name is out there. I Listen, I done been in comment section where people have said, because I've said this in comment sections, what I'm about to say right now. Niggas don't be listening to Janelle Monet. Like, not for real. She like an industry plan, if you ask me. But because it's like, and they go, no, she's super talented. Man, come on, just stop. The, listen, stop the games. She went like, I mean, 10 years wearing black and white outfits, suit jackets. Black and white, literally. Every trip, every trip. And now she trying to get butt ass naked. Listen, don't tell me that this is all about unleashing your expression. This is about you trying to get more attention. Somebody that said to you, we didn't carry you for a long time. Now it's time for you to pay back. We're going to need you to come yeah. up out them clothes. You've got to feed the beast. You never know when it's going to happen. But at some point, you, listen, you can't just take, take, take. All right. You got movies. You got all of these roles. You got this music. We want to see that pussy. Throw that bitch on the screen for us. Wear this T-shirt right here. You can see right through it. We want to see your nipples. Let's do some shit. Let's do some some risque. Yeah, this that's how it work. That's how feed the that's how feeding the beast work with anything. And, and then when I meet these women, like because uh, some of these women that's over forty, they got the mentality of like these young girls sometimes. And it's like now you meet they these girls too close to them, bro. And their her whole lifestyle is me me being that that the baddest bitch. I'm gonna say something. Can I just real quick just show some love to Missy Elliott? Because that woman is one <laughs> right. of the most talented individuals in the world and she's aging in reverse. Oh my God. She is gorgeous. And she's always been gorgeous, but you know, she was always a little bit bigger. So she wasn't that like the listen, Missy I'll Elliott. Missy I just want to shout her out real quick. Well, we talked about and Millie and, and Millie, really I wanted to get with the with the big Missy Elliott. I was very I was fine with that. Like, let's be honest. She was thick. <laughs> I liked it a lot. I mean, um, so we gonna trash move on bag to, Missy. That was the Mega Man trash bag Missy. I gotta move on to this next topic. And this topic okay, and I'm sorry, real quick. I have to run outside and grab a package that was dropped off in I got a package you can grab. Hey! <laughs> Poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>